Here's the second video um, on our review for ma mathematics before we start physics. And I wanted to do some of the um, conversions that you need to know, some few more practice questions with you. And I want to convert three hours into seconds. So one hour uh, has 60 minutes and each minute has 60 seconds. So it's 60 of 60, 360, 3,600 seconds in one hour. So you have three times of one hour, which is 3,600 seconds. And uh, it's the same as three times 3,000 gives me 9,000. And three times 600 gives me 1,800. So I get 10,800 seconds. Converting kilometers into meters. So kilo stands for 1,000. So 20 kilometers is the same as 20,000 meters because kilo stands for 1,000. I'm going to convert um, 12,000 kilometers an hour into meters per second. So I have 12, um, 1,200, 1,200, and then kilo stands for 1,000, and then meters. So I have 1,200 kilometers. And instead of seconds, I'm going to write hours. In one hour, there's 3,600 seconds, so I'm going to write 3,600 seconds. So that gives me uh, kilo meters per hour, which is 3,600 seconds. I can cancel a hundred and a hundred, and I can cancel a 12 and a 12. So what's left on the top is 1,000, and at the bottom, I'll have only three left meters per second which is 333.3 meters per second. You also should be able to um, solve equations for the variables. So like let's say number one, um, they ask you to solve for r. So if I have a is equal to pi r squared, and I'm solving for r, um, I'm going to treat my a and pi as if they were numbers, and I'm just solving for one variable, which is r. So I'm going to divide both sides by pi. Pi and pi cancels on the right side. What's left is just r squared is equal to a over pi. And then I can take the square root of both sides just to make r alone. And the square root and square cancel each other. Um, so I have r is equal to the square root of a over pi. In number two, I need to solve for L. It's actually the time, the equation of the period for the pendulum. So if you have the pendulum and you let it swing there and back, um, the time it would take to go there and back would be equal to 2 pi and the square root of L is the length of the uh, string in the pendulum, and G is the acceleration to the gravity. And I have to solve this equation for um, L. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So if I divide by two sides by 2 pi, 2 pi and 2 pi on one side cancel. So what I have T divided by 2 pi is equal to the square root of L over G. Then I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. So square this side, square this side. And when I'm squaring, I have to square every single term that I see over there. So that gives me T squared. 2 squared gives me 4 pi squared. And when I square the square root, the square and the square root go away, and I have L over G. Now I have to get rid of um, pi squared. Now I have to get rid of G. So I'm going to times both sides by G. And the G and the G cancels. So what I have is T squared G over 4 pi squared, and that is equal to L. So I solved it for L. 
I'm gonna solve a few more variables before I come uh, for a few equations for a variable before I come to number three. So let's look at number seven. In number seven, I have to solve for C. So what I have is three X plus Y divided by C is equal to four. So to get rid of C from the denominator, I'm gonna times by C both sides. C and C cancels on the left side. I have 3x plus y is equal to 4c, and I'm solving for c. So next step I'm going to do is divide both sides by 4. 4 and 4 cancels, and I have c is equal to 3x plus y divided by 4. So I solved for c. I'm also going to do number, four, uh, number 12. So I have S is equal to N over 2, and then I have A plus T. I'm going to rewrite it as S is equal to, A plus T is not in the denominator, it is in the numerator. So I'm going to rewrite as N, A plus T, and divide it by 2. And I'm going to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to times both sides by 2. Uh, 2 and 2 cancels. What I have left is 2s is equal to n a plus t. And I have to solve for n. So I'm going to divide both sides by a plus t. So a plus t is going to be canceled from the right side. And I have n is equal to 2s divided by a plus t. Okay, I came back to number three that I want to talk about. So what um, here is, I want to figure out what I have to do in order to double my t. What do I change? Um, I'm going to change l. Let's say we want to change l, and we want to double our t. And here's an example. So right now, t is equal to 2 pi, the square root of l over g. So if all this is some number, I don't know what number it is, but it is some number. What I want to do is to double my answer. So I have to change something with that inside of that red box that will double my answer. Um, 2 is a constant, so I cannot change 2. Pi is a constant, I cannot change pi. G is 10 on Earth, so I cannot change G. What's left to change is only L. So now I have to change my L somehow in order to um, to double my answer. So my T will become twice as big. So it is some number, but I don't like that number. I want to make it twice as big. So maybe it's a, that pendulum that goes from one side to another and back. And um, that T that I'm getting, I'm not happy with it. I want it to be twice as big. So I'm going to change the length of that pendulum somehow to make my time that goes there and back twice as much. So make your predictions what you have to do with L and then pause it, try to figure it out, and then you will check your answer after I explain. How many of you said you have to double L? Anybody said you have to do one half length of L? Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do four times the length of L. So if this length of L gives me um, first t, which is 2 pi, the square root of L over g, then making this L 1, 2, 3, 4 times as big. So if I make my L 4 times as big and I let it swing, it will give me the time that is two times as big as the original was. So original time was maybe L over G, this much. But now my answer is going to be twice as big as it used to be if I make my L four times as big. Because when I take the square root of four times big L, do you see that four can come out? and jumps in front. It's the square root of that 4 gives me 2. 
Now my answer becomes twice as big as it used to be. So it used to be this number, and now it is twice as big. What if I wanted to make my time three times as big? So I am not happy with twice as big number. I want to make my time t, at the period that goes there and back, three times as big. So what do I have to do to the length of my string in the pendulum to make the time three times as big? So I have t is equal to 2 pi l over g, and I want this number to be three times as big. So this is the original number. The original number was equal to this. But now I want to make it three times as big. So what I'm going to do, if you said 9, you were right. Because when you take the square root of that 9, it will come out as additional 3 on front and make three times as big number as before. What if I had a different equation? Maybe I had a b is equal to, maybe again, 2 pi, and I have the square root of c over d. Not the square root, I'm going to make a cube root. So now my b is equal to some number. So if I plug in some c and some d, I'm going to get some number. But I don't like my b this way. I want it to be twice as big. But now it is cube root. It's not the square root. It's a cube root. So what should I do, let's say, to c to make my answer twice as big as it used to be? Anybody said 4? Anybody said yeah, 8? Why do you think it's 8? If you think it's a cube root of 8, cube root, or a cube root of 8 will give me 2, and that gives me twice as big answer as the original that I used to have. What if I wanted to um, take the same equation, b is equal to 2 pi, and cube root of c over d. But now I wanted to not double my b, I wanted to triple my b. So I have a b that I'm not happy with, and I want my b to triple. How do I get a 3 by changing c? So by how much I make my c bigger or smaller to make b 3 times as big? And if you said 27 times, then you're right, because the cube root of 27 will give you a 3 out. And that 3, so 27, the cube root of 27 is going to disappear, and that is going to give you 3 times as big value of b as you used to have before. So these are the things that you should know before you enter physics class. The math practices. Um, I think I have a few more questions to look with you before uh, we start kinematics in physics. In physics, you should be able to understand and uh, calculate the basics of vector additions. Um, and the basics, I mean like a Pythagorean theorem type of questions. Uh, we're not going to do anything with uh, beyond that, no law of sine, a law of cosine. We'll do that in AP Physics 1. But um, for for adding two vectors, let's say an airplane is flying, so this will be our airplane. An airplane is flying in this direction, and the wind is blowing in this direction. So obviously, the airplane is not going to be able to get to its course. Um, the airplane is going to be drifted in this direction. So instead of flying um, in its original course, the airplane will be drifted by the wind in the opposite, um, not opposite, but in a different direction. So these ones are called the vector additions. So if you have two vectors, so the vector means direction. Um, it has, vectors have the magnitude, how strong it is, and it has a direction. So you can have this vector this way, or you can have that vector this way. So this can be A, and that can be A. It changed the direction. So, but the magnitude is how long that A is. Um, so because different length of A will give you different uh, final destination from the original destination. So you can add two vectors by completing a triangle. So if you have 
one vector and you want to add another vector you want to add another vector um, so you uh, complete a triangle and that's going to be the addition of two vectors or you could also do it this way if you have one vector the one on the right the picture and you have another vector instead of making it look like a triangle so you could move this um, vector on the top and then you could complete the triangle and that will be a resultant vector or um, sometimes you can do a parallelogram so you have this vector in this direction maybe that's the airplane and maybe this is the wind blowing um, and you know exactly that um, your airplane is not going to be able to go with its course which is green line so that means i'm going to complete a parallelogram so i'm gonna make this line parallel to the wind and then i'm gonna make this line parallel to the direction of the plane and then my resultant the actual direction of the plane is going to be the green one which is the diagonal of that parallelogram so there's two ways to add um, two vectors it's either uh, completing a triangle or making a parallelogram and the diagonal is going to be your resultant vector and in physics we're not going to do anything that complicated where um, the image showed you so it's going to be a little bit easier so here is one example so they are all right triangles so you can use Pythagorean theorem and your um, you have to find the resultant vector so let's say if this is the direction of the airplane and this is the direction of the wind then this is the actual direction where the airplane is going to be going so i want to find what that is equal to from pythagorean theorem i have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared and doesn't matter which one is a this can be a and this can be b so c squared the hypotenuse is equal to 8 squared plus 4 squared and that gives me 64 plus 16 and that is 80 so it's the square root of 80 let me show you how do you take the square root without using a calculator so you have 80 I know there is 4 and 20 inside of 80 so I could take the square root of 4 that gives me 2 out but 20 also has a 4 and a 5 so I could take another 4 out um, the square root of 4 gives me another 2 out and I already had 2 out so that gives me 4 and then I have the square root of 5 so that's how I would simplify my um, square root problem. Or you could notice right away that that is 16 times 5. And the square root of 16 is 4 square roots of 5. There are more questions like this for you to practice online. So I'm gonna not going to do all of them. I'm going to skip some of, some of them. But you can practice. And if you have questions again, you can always ask me questions. Or email me so what we usually have to look at um, with physics is at vectors and scalars and um, vectors are usually the the parameters that have um, they have direction and the magnitude so if I tell you I'm driving my car is driving with 50 miles per hour and how far I'm gonna be you can tell me, well, you're going to be 50 miles away in any direction, correct? Because you do not know which direction I was going. But then if I tell you that I'm driving with 50 miles per hour north and I'm asking you where I'm going to be in an hour, you're going to tell me, well, in an hour, you're going to be 50 miles away um, north from where you started, correct? So 50 miles an hour is the magnitude. That's how fast I'm driving. Direction is... Um, telling you in what direction I'm tra traveling. So the vectors have both. They have the direction and they have the magnitude. So the magnitude how it's drawn and direction is just the direction. So all the vectors have directions and magnitude. So if I'm telling you 
I'm going to push uh, on the book and what direction the book is going to slide. You're going to tell me, if you tell me what direction you push on the book, we will tell you what direction it's going to slide. Because you can ask me how, fa how strong I'm going to push on the book. Um, that's the magnitude, how much force I'm going to apply. And then you're going to ask me in what direction I'm going to push. So you will know in what direction the book is going to be sliding. So again, the vectors need two uh, quantities. They need direction. And direction is usually the angle at which direction it's moving, and uh, magnitude is how strong it's moving. But the speed is a different thing. The speed is um, just the scalar because it's just the magnitude. So when I'm driving with 50 miles an hour and I'm looking at my speedometer, my speedometer just tells me it's 50 miles an hour. But without the compass, I would never know which direction I go. So the speedometer tells me the speed, and speed is just the, uh, the magnitude of the velocity, it doesn't have the direction itself. So speed is a scalar, doesn't have the direction, and velocity is um, the vector because it has the magnitude and it has a direction. Here's another example of the uh, scalar and vector quantity. So if you were, went for a hike, um, let's say you left point A and you arrived to point B, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that from point A to point B you went the shortest uh, way. You might have went some long path when you were hiking, but at the end um, you went from this point to this point. If nobody was watching how you got from one point to another, they only could say, well, you're this far away from the point where you started. So that is the displacement. The displacement is, again, the magnitude in the direction. Think about this person was displaced or misplaced from the position A to position B. And so if they ask you about with the displacement, it's only the shortest path from point A to point B. But it doesn't mean that that person actually traveled from point A to point B, that the distance. He might have traveled it this distance. And usually in the classroom, I tell the students, you saw me in this classroom yesterday and you see me in this classroom today. Does that mean that I never left the room. No, of course not, because um, my displacement is zero because I am in the same spot as you saw me yesterday. But my distance travel between yesterday's today is much larger than just my displacement, which is zero. So that is an example of displacement and um, distance. So the distance is the path you travel and the displacement is the shortest distance between the point you started and the point you ended up at. And um, here is the boy he starts at point A and he goes back to point A and they ask you what is the, um, and I, I changed the numbers so these numbers don't match. So what is the distance that the boy traveled? So he traveled three meters, five meters, three meters, and five meters. So he traveled 16 meters and his displacement is zero. So the, the second one matched, but not the first one. So his displacement is six, uh, zero meters because he's back to the point where he started from. So that is the example of the displacement. And um, here is another example. The skier started from point A, went to point B, went to point C, and back to point D. So he traveled 180 meters. Then he traveled 140 meters, and then he traveled 100 meters. So his total distance is uh, 420 meters. So he traveled 420 meters. But if somebody was not looking at him and only saw that he went from point A to point uh, D, final destination, that person could say his displacement is only 140 meters. They don't know the actual distance they traveled. They will just say the displacement is 140 because they didn't see that he went from A to B to C to D. Uh, but we know he went all this distance, so the actual distance is going to be that much. Here's another example, um, good one to look at. So I have a person starting from A and goes all the way to F. So I see this person went six units here, two units here, three units here, one unit here, and one unit here. That person traveled 13 meters. 
but the percent displacement is not 13 units. This is the percent displacement. So I'm going to look at the right triangle. I'm going to look at this part, and I'm going to look at this part. So this is 4, and this is 3. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So C is equal to 5 meters, or 5 units. And they tell you each square in this case is 1.5 kilometer. So I chose, as my example, I chose each division to be uh, 1 kilometer. So my answer is based on 1 kilometer, not 0.5 kilometers. Here are a few last examples that I want to show you. So um, if I need to calculate the distance traveled between points, let's say um, starting point and the finish line. So I have 3 meters, 3.1 meter. Uh, 1 meter, 3.9 meters, and 4 meters. If I add all of them, I get um, 15 meters. So that's the total distance traveled. But they also uh, ask you to find the displacement. And the displacement is going to be the shortest distance. So I need to make uh, this triangle and analyze this triangle. So there is right angle here. This length is 3.1 and 3.9. So that gives me um, 7 meters. And um, this length is 3, but this part and this part is 5. So that means uh, wherever is left there is 2, because if this is 5 and this is 3, then that part is 2. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So c is equal to the square root of 53 and if I calculate it in meters then it's meters here is another example so an object started at the start point and at the end point and uh, the total distance is 5 4 and um, and 2 which gives me 11 meters but I want to know the displacement as well so I'm gonna look at this triangle this part is 4 and this part is 3 because the full length from this point to this point is 5 but this part, part is 2, so that means um, this part of the triangle is 3. So I'm going to look for C again. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So C is equal to the square root of 25, which is 5 meters. And here is our final question that I'm going to do. There's more online that you can see, but the, this is the one that I chose to do uh, for mathematics. And uh, next video is going to be kinematics, which is the beginning of physics, where we start um, acceleration, velocity, distance, time, formulas, and so all physics. So this is the last question that we're going to do in math. So um, the total distance traveled, I see two meters two meters five meters and six meters i don't know this distance but i see this triangle and this is your c so i know that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared and i'm going to call this one is a so i have 10 squared is equal to a squared plus and that one is six squared so a is going to be eight if you do the calculations that will give you eight so I have this part is 8, so I have 8 and 6. If I add them all together, it looks like my distance traveled is 19. And now I need to do the displacement. I need to look at this triangle. So it's this part and this part that I need to know. The vertical part of my right triangle is 6 meters and 2 meters long, which is 8 meters. So this part is 8. And the horizontal distance between here and here, if you look at this part, this is 8. And this part is 2 and that part is 5. So that's 7. So what's left is 1. And the, if I calculate the C part, so C is equal to uh, A squared, which is 8 squared plus 1 squared. So that gives me C is equal to square root of 65. And that is all that you need to know for the basics of the math for uh, before we start physics. And uh, thank you for watching and come back and watch the rest of the videos soon. Uh, see you later.